first let's address this situation here so i was at the thrift store i found a genuine chanel bag that was still being sold on their website for over 10 grand so of course i grab it and then i feel someone behind me try to kind of push me out of the way to get it this person literally pushes me down to the ground, which is how I hit my face on the ground and scraped it up the way that I did. And so I grabbed her and I shoved her again. Okay, none of that happened. Literally, I like fell off a scooter. Wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. It was a little bit more than just falling off a scooter. Basically, I was on a electric scooter with my son and he braked all of a sudden really fast while we were going kind of fast. And so we just kind of flew off. My face literally skid on the pavement and my knee, which you cannot see, thankfully for you, cause it's disgusting, <laughs> is super swollen and messed up. And so that's why I'm in bed filming this right now for you um, so that I can keep my knee elevated and iced, which is what I'm doing right now. But even in this condition, I'm going to be filming a what sold video for you today. Specifically, we're gonna be talking Talking about the first week of May and do not fret because I actually have all of my May what's old videos ready to go all of the information is ready I just have to sit here in my bed and film them for you so we are getting caught up and very soon I'm gonna be talking about June in June I know this is what you guys have been asking for um, but we are gonna start by talking about May 1st through the 7th let's just jump right in and on May 1st which was a Monday the first thing to sell on Poshmark was this White House black market beaded lined sides of a line skirt in a size six. This came to me in a wholesale palette that you guys have probably heard me talk about a lot if you've been watching my what sold videos but essentially there is a reseller who just had too much inventory on her hands and wanted to let go of a lot of it before her and her fiance got married and so i bought like half a palette off of her maybe and each sellable item came out to about three dollars and 92 cents and so this skirt sold for $21. That was with discounted shipping because of a service that I use called Posh VA. They shared my closet for me. They sent out offers to likers on this item for me, which is how I made the sale. And so after you factor in my cost of goods, as well as my shipping discount, as well as Poshmark's 20% fee cut, I was left with a mere profit of $10.86. So you know, all of that like sending offers and having to offer a discount, your cost of goods, the Fee, all of that definitely eats into your profit quite a bit, which is why I think it's important for me to share all of those little costs that go into some of these sales. Because if I say that this skirt sold for $21, you're like, oh, that's pretty good. But then when you realize about half of that is what ended up in my bank account, it puts things in perspective a little bit more, I think. The next thing to sell was this Dana Buckman silver two-piece blazer skirt suit set in a size small. This is something that I think my mother-in-law gave me for free. She just gets a lot of stuff from like people at her church and her friends. They just, I don't know, I guess it's like a Korean thing. Like people just give each other stuff. I don't know. She gets some really random things, but I went ahead and listed this as a set. It sold for $12. And again, that was because of Posh VA. Um, it sent out an offer to likers for me five minutes after someone liked it. And they went ahead and accepted. So after the shipping discount of $2.02 and my fees, that total that I was able to put in my bank account from the sale was $7.03. I didn't have a cost of goods associated with this because like I said, my mother-in-law gave it to me for free. But you know, that shipping discount, that Poshmark fee, it definitely eats into the profits still. The next thing to sell was this pair of new without the box SAS, that's S-A-S. I believe it stands for San Antonio shoes or something like that, but it's a well-known comfort wear brand. They also sell like orthopedics. They're kind of like specialized shoes for people who deal with health issues regarding their feet. So um, this was a pair of black lace metallic floral ballet flats in a size nine and a half. They sold for $35 and I actually picked these up at a local thrift store for $3.99. I do feel like I see this brand often at thrift stores and oftentimes they look yeah, like orthopedic shoes. Kind of like what you see the little grandmas wearing as they're like walking around the mall and stuff. But this definitely was a cuter style, which is why I picked it up. It wasn't that typical shoe by this brand. Um, and I think that's partly what helped it sell. So it sold for 35. I had 3.99 into it from that thrift store. And so I made a net profit of $24.01. 
The next thing to sell was another pair of shoes. This was by the brand Ash. I have sold this pair once or twice before, and I remember when I first got it, it was from someone at my church who gave me a bunch of stuff to sell. And when I saw the label, I just thought it was like, like a boutique brand or something. I thought it maybe it wasn't really worth that much because the label itself looked kind of cheap. Like I feel like the font of this just isn't as appealing as some other ones. Like some labels, you see the label and you're like, oh, I don't know what this is, but it looks expensive. That is not the case with Ash. But when I did the haul on my channel of the stuff that I got from this person at my church, a lot of you were like, oh my gosh, Ash is a good brand. Like don't treat it like garbage the way that you're talking about it. Like you guys let me know that this is a, in fact a good brand. So I came across these pair of Loco. That was the style name. Tan leather tassel studded cowboy boots in a European size 38. I came across these at a local Goodwill. Um, so I purchased them for $7.99. They sold for $34 on Poshmark with discounted shipping because of Posh VA. And so I ended up making a net profit of $17.19. I thought these had a really cool look to them. You know, they were very like boho kind of Western style. I really like the fringe. So I just thought they were really cool. And I'm glad to have also known going in that the brand is pretty good. So this day I had four Poshmark sales, three of them sold as a result of Posh or VA. And if that is a service that you want to try out as well, I do have a coupon code. It's literally just Becky Park, which is my name, and it'll enable you to save 20% off of your first payment of Posh or VA. So definitely give it a try if you're sick of having to send out offers yourself or if you're sick of having to share your closet. It's a pretty great service that I highly recommend because I'll use it literally every day. So that was not the only platform that I had sales on, thankfully, on this Monday. It was a good Monday, actually, of sales. Um, I also had three sales on eBay. The first one was this Under Armour Wounded Warrior Project blue hoodie sweatshirt in a size medium. Now, this was pretty flawed. It had a lot of like little pulls on the hoodie. Um, it still sold for $15, however, and it was promoted at 3%. I got this from a reseller who decided she hated selling clothes, and so I bought all of her clothing inventory off of her I had about two dollars into each item and so I ended up making a profit of ten dollars and ten cents which isn't a lot you know honestly I feel like most of the sales I've made from items that I bought off of this particular reseller I've been making a profit of like maybe ten fifteen dollars off of there were some big wins where I'm making like a fifty sixty dollar profit but for the most part it's like ten fifteen dollars here and there which you know it all adds up it is a little bit more work than maybe I would have liked to do but um, I'm especially happy with the fact that I was able to make a ten dollar profit off of a flawed item and so you know I do sell a lot of things with flaws I find that the key is making sure that the buyer knows through multiple ways that this is a flawed item I make sure to put it in the description I make sure to take pictures of the flaws. I don't want the flaws to be a surprise when it gets to the buyer, but I want them to know that this is what they're purchasing, flaws and all. So definitely if you have pieces at home that have little you know, flaws here and there, a few stains, whatever, if you are able to disclose them very well, I think you can still make the sale and make some money. The next thing to sell was by the brand Ex Officio, which is another brand that I didn't really know much about. I think maybe I got a piece in like a thread up box or something. And you guys are the ones that let me know that it's actually a pretty decent brand. It's definitely bread and butter, like bread and butter outdoor, you know, hiking, camping um, type of brand. It's not like an amazing brand, but definitely worth picking up if you can get it for really cheap. Now, this also came to me from the reseller who hated selling clothes. And so I had $2 into it. But but it was this insect shield button up long sleeve shirt in a women's size large and it was vented. So perfect, like I said, for hiking, for camping, for any outdoor activity. Um, it had just kind of built in technology to repel insects from you. I feel like I need that just on a daily basis. I love being outside, but I hate bugs. And so if they could infuse that technology into like cuter clothes, that would be amazing. But this sold for $17.90. That was an offer that I sent out to buyers. Someone accepted. It was promoted at 3% as well. I had $2 into it, like I said. So my net profit on that was $12.77. So if you're able to pick up this brand, especially for men, um, maybe at the bins or something for like a buck or two, I think it's definitely worth it. The next thing to sell was this vintage Western bone bead concho belt in a size 32 this had like floral etching on the silver um hardware like on the buckle 
I don't know anything about this kind of stuff. I don't usually see this kind of stuff in my area, but I happen to find this as well as like a big Harley Davidson belt with like a big Harley Davidson buckle. I happen to find these belts at a local thrift store and they had them priced really well. They had them priced at $3.99. So I just went ahead and picked it up just to try. Um, again, I didn't know anything about it. I did kind of run comps and had they been by brands like, oh, I can't remember now, but like there are specific brands that make these style of belts that are worth a ton mine was unbranded I couldn't find any information regarding a brand it still sold for $25 on eBay it was promoted at 3% so once you factor in you know the promotion fees my cost of goods and eBay's fees my net profit on that belt was $16.51 and you know the most important thing I think is that I was able to save this really cool piece and find it a new home the next day of sales that we'll talk about is Tuesday which is May 2nd the first thing to sell on Poshmark was by the brand Miguel Lena, I think I'm saying that correctly, but it was this white lace embroidered flower dress. Um, I actually also put swimsuit cover in the title and it was in a size small. I put swimsuit cover in the title because I think this would have been really cute as a swimsuit cover, but also because when I found stock photos of this dress and just like information about this dress, I realized that it was missing its lining. And so because it's like a crochet lace dress, you really need a lining underneath it. But that's why I put swimsuit cover because I could definitely envision it being like a really great boho swimsuit cover as well. Um, I got this at Plato's Closet for $10. And when I purchased it, you know, I saw the brand. I didn't know much about it, but I ran comps and it retails for a ton and is sold on sites like the real real. So I picked it up, but once I got it home and, you know, started photographing it, that's when I realized that, you know, it was missing its slip. And then I also realized that it had a decent number of stains and like markings on it, which is why I ended up pricing it lower than I'd initially thought I'd be able to price it at when I, you know, saw it at Play-Doh's, but it sold for $38. I think maybe I had it priced at like maybe 50. I think I was hoping to list it around like 60 or 75, but with its flaws, I priced it at 50, sold it for 38 with this kind of chipping because of Pasha VA. And so I made a net profit on that of $18 and 38 cents. So while that wasn't the big win that I was hoping it would be. It's definitely a brand that I learned about and will definitely be on the lookout for in the future, just in better shape. The next thing to sell was over on eBay. It was this Columbia Green River Resort floral snap button up shirt in a size extra large. Um, it was made of 100% cotton. This item also came to me from the reseller who hated reselling clothing. So I had $2 into it. It sold for $14.90. That was an offer that I sent out to watchers. And so I made a net profit of $10.51. You guys have already heard me talk a lot about Columbia. It's not a brand that I enjoy reselling because although like it retails for a fair amount, it's, you know, good quality. It's good construction. It does not resell for a lot. I feel like Columbia and North Face are brands that they just don't do as well as brands like Patagonia, Outdoor Research, even Cool. Like I feel like those brands do a lot better. But if you are finding like Columbia jackets or Columbia boots, like I think those things are okay. These kinds of button up shirts, no, leave them behind. The next thing to sell is kind of silly. It sold over on Mercari and it was this Red Wings Detroit NHL, which is National Hockey League, hooded one-piece jumpsuit. I also put the word sweater in there. This is not a sweater. Um, it's like a cozy PJ jumpsuit, one, I don't know, whatever, but it was in a size medium. I had this listed for a decent amount, guys. Like I had a comment um, in my last video about how I sold, I think it was like a football piece. I sold it for like a lot less, someone thought than I should have. But the truth is like, I've had these pieces listed for a while. This one piece I've had listed for at least a year, I wanna say. And I think I had it listed starting at like 35 because you know, it's a big piece and it's kind of unique. It's like a one piece but it's been listed for a year or so on all of my platforms with you know, no takers. I've had, you know, decent interest in this item, but no takers. I've sent out offers upon offers. Um, finally, someone sent me a $14 offer on it and I just went ahead and accepted. Could I have gotten more? Absolutely. But I gave everyone in the world an opportunity for a year to purchase this for more. And everyone in the world was like, no, thank you. I'd rather not. So when someone said, I'll give you $14 for it, I was like, 
oh good, let's do it. Let's move forward. I only had a dollar and two cents into that because it was something that I got from a local reseller who decided she didn't want to resell anymore. She wanted to spend more time with her family and just kind of on um, personal issues in her life. And so she sold me all of her inventory and that was like two years ago. That's why I'm saying I've had this in my possession for a long time. I just needed to get it out. It's a big bulky piece. So I made a net profit of $10 and 40 cents on that. On May 3rd, which was Wednesday, on Poshmark, I sold this Hannah Anderson blue, red, and white striped patch cotton zip hoodie in a Hannah Anderson size 90. I don't remember what that converts to in US sizing. They go by like centimeters, so that's 90 centimeters. This sold for $12 with this kind of shipping because of Poshmark VA. So really like I have Poshmark VA to thank for the majority of my Poshmark sales this week. But I only had a dollar and 50 cents into that from a friend of mine who moved and she was kind of reselling very casually but then she was moving like many states over and she's like I don't want to take all this stuff plus the place that she moved to has like three bins near her like three Goodwill outlets so she's gonna have access to some really great stuff really close by and for super cheap in fact I think the very first time she went to the bins in her new city she sent me a picture of some of the stuff that she got and she got like a pair of Stuart Weitzman boots like the knee-high ones I mean, she's in good shape. She did not need to carry this Hannah Anderson piece all the way to this new part of the country with her. But I was able to make a net profit of $5.53 off of it. So thank you, friend, if you're watching. And I hope you're finding some amazing stuff. The next thing to sell was actually a bundle of two pieces. The first piece was this loft black floral spaghetti strap smocked tunic top in a size small. That one I got for free from a friend, so no cost of goods into that. Um, and actually this wasn't listed for too long, which I was thankful for because I remember being very hesitant to even list it at all, just because I feel like loft for me sits for ages. Even if it's super cute, it sits for ages because there's so much loft on reselling platforms already. And then the next piece to sell was this cloth and stone blue chambray tensile Lysol split neck shirt in a size small. This one did sit forever. I got it at a local consignment store for $3.50. So that bundle, I believe someone liked both pieces. I put them in a bundle for the buyer. I sent them an offer of $35 with discounted shipping. And so once you factor in the discounted shipping, my cost of goods, my net profit for those two pieces was $21.52. That is something I like to do when I notice that someone has gone through my closet and liked a few pieces, whether it's two or like eight, I will go ahead and create a bundle and then I will send them an offer. Maybe they're newer to Poshmark and they don't know that you can even do that, but especially if it's older pieces, I like to really sweeten the deal by sending a really great offer and oftentimes I'll make sales that way. And I have a lot more tips on bundling on Poshmark if you wanna check out this video right here. It's a little bit older, but it has a lot of good information, I believe. And then on eBay, I sold this Lane Bryant blue sleeveless pleated A-line pleated dress in a size 14 by 16. I absolutely hate selling Lane Bryant. I realize like it just is not a good seller. It does not sell well for me. It never sells for a good amount. And I always sit on it for a really, really long time. So if I have to choose between like Lane Bryant or Torrid, I'm going to choose Torrid a thousand percent over Lane Bryant. But this piece finally sold for $15. It's not like it was listed that long, but I don't know. I've just had too many bad experiences with Lane Bryant. I feel like this came from the reseller who hates reselling clothes. I had $2 into it. I I made a profit of nine dollars and 95 cents moving on to thursday which was may 4th on poshmark i sold this dress by the brand signature by sangria never heard of it it was this black v-neck spaghetti strap dress in a women's size 16 it was fully lined I think I had it listed kind of high, maybe for like $35, but someone sent me a $20 offer. I just went ahead and accepted because I was like, I don't know who else is going to want this dress. So I accepted the $20 offer. I had $2 into it from the reseller who didn't like to resell clothes. I made a net profit of $14. On eBay, oh my goodness, this item I've had forever. It was this new with tags design history black and white striped layered skirt. It was kind of like a pencil skirt in a size small. This one has been listed for I mean at least two and a half years. It was something that I got at a local consignment store 
during COVID when businesses were not allowed to open. So I kind of struck a deal with them where I would go in their storage unit and I would shop by myself by filling big black garbage bags full of the pieces that I wanted to purchase and they charged me $50 per bag. So my cost of goods for clothing came out to about 80 cents a piece, which is great, but you know, I probably picked up some pieces that I didn't need to pick up. This, I don't think was necessarily like a horrible pickup, but I think the issue is that I had it priced too high when I first listed it and then it just has been sitting forever. I feel like it may have actually sold once on eBay for like more, but then they ended up returning it due to fit. So I don't know. It finally sold on eBay again for $21.90. That was an offer that I sent out to watchers. Um, and so my net profit on that after many, many months and years was $18.12. Sorry, I have like three ice packs on this knee and one of them fell over. So my brother is a nurse practitioner and he helps me save so much money because um, if there is ever like a medical issue for anyone in my family, uh, we will go to him first. And he's saved us many trips to like convenient care or even the ER. So he told me that there's like these things in your knee called bursa that's like little sacks i don't know but he said basically my bursa um there's like multiple they're inflamed and sometimes people have to get like the liquid drained out of their knee i'm trying to prevent that from happening i had to do that many years ago and it was the worst and so i don't want to go through that so i'm doing all this icing and elevating and we shall see if we can avoid going to the doctor so the next item that sold on ebay was this new with tags talbot's 100 linen one button blazer in a size six this sold for 35 dollars. i had eight dollars and 28 cents into it I want to say from a pop-up consignment sale. I'm pretty sure that was my average cost of goods for a pop-up consignment sale that I go to twice a year. I'm kind of bummed because the one coming up is happening while I'm in Korea and it'll be the first one I've missed since I started going to this thing. It's where I get a lot of my best pieces. So I know I'm missing out on a ton of great inventory, but I mean, I'll be making really great memories with my family and eating a lot. When you see me in my first video after Korea, I will probably have gained like 80 pounds because literally all we're going to do in Korea is eat, I think. But I made a net profit of $19.45 on this blazer. You guys know I love selling Talbots and if it's new with tags, if it's linen, if it's all those things, it's a no-brainer. The next thing to sell was actually another Lane Bryant piece. So as much as I hate selling Lane Bryant, this was like a day when I sold two pieces, which is always how it happens, I feel like. Things sell like together in groups and that's always how it goes, I feel like. But it was this pink button up cardigan in a size 18 by 20. This came from the same reseller who didn't want to sell clothes anymore, so I bought her inventory off of her. It sold for $17.99 on eBay, which was my full asking price, and I made a net profit of $12.74. And then I had a rare Facebook Marketplace sale because I just don't make sales over there anymore, but it was this Catherine's blue paisley print button-up long sleeve shirt in a plus size 2X. Catherine's like we have a Catherine's actually I don't know if it's still in business we had a Catherine's in town and it was in like a little strip mall so I don't know if they're typically standalone stores or if they're typically found in like a mall from my understanding they typically sell um, plus size clothing but definitely clothing for like a more mature woman if I'm not mistaken this sold for $20 on Facebook marketplace and it was something that I got for $2 from the reseller who didn't like to resell clothes and I made a net profit of $16.58 I was surprised because this sold really fast like within a few days of being listed and I don't know if that was a fluke or if Catherine's just typically does really well if you have experience selling this brand let me know down in the comments below I'm very curious on Friday, which was May 5th, I had a great sales day and I actually sold things on one, two, three, four different platforms. And that's because I use a cross-listing Chrome extension called List Perfectly. I also use it to just kind of keep track of all of my inventory and to create sales reports for me. I don't use it just to cross-list, but that and Posture VA are two products that I use on a daily basis to help me find any sort of success as a reseller. Literally, I, like, I don't know how I would live without it. So if you wanna try out List Perfectly and get on more platforms, maybe you've been kind of scared about listing on other platforms or it just seems over overwhelming to you, I think List Perfectly will help. It'll just make cross-listing so much faster and it'll help you keep track of where everything 
is. And if you want to try it, my coupon code is Becky Park, and it'll help you save 30% off of your first month. And they also have a free trial period, so you can just try it out and see if it's for you. And if not, you can cancel, no questions asked. It's a really great product that I highly, highly recommend. But the first platform that I had some sales on was Poshmark. The first thing to sell was this Nike Golf Sphere React Red Short Sleeve Polo Shirt for Men in a Size Medium. This sold actually for my full asking price of $25. It was something that I got for free from my mother-in-law and I made a $20 profit on it. I believe that was listed for maybe like a month or two. And Nike Golf is definitely a brand that I've actively been picking up more. It does sell pretty quickly and it does sell pretty well. Maybe not for like a huge amount. It's definitely not going to sell for like a bajillion dollars, but if you can pick it up for cheap or in this instance, get it for free, it's a no brainer. The next thing to sell was this Land's End orange and blue striped short sleeve t-shirt in a size small for men. It was made of 100% cotton. This baby sold for $8. So this is not something that I would recommend getting. Most basic t-shirts I don't recommend getting unless they're by brands like Fear of God or something. But this was from the reseller who sold me all of her inventory so she could focus on her family. Um, I had a dollar and two cents into this. I made a profit of $4.03. That can get you a slushy and fries at McDonald's. So am I mad about it? No. The next thing to sell was this new without tags BB Dakota gray long line open front cardigan in a size medium. I also put the word cozy in the listing title because I had some characters left. This sold for $19. I had $3.92 into it from the reseller who, um, you know, sold me like a half pallet of clothing. I made a net profit of $11.28. That one got like a decent amount of attention, but I remember getting a $19 offer and just being like, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and accept. BB Dakota is another brand that it retails for a decent amount, but it is hard to resell. I just feel like people don't wanna pay a lot for it in the resale market. Um, so it's definitely a brand I typically avoid because it usually just is not worth the amount that thrift stores and consignment stores are asking for. The next item was this Burberry Golf Ivory Short Sleeve Polo Shirt in a size large. This was made of 100% cotton. I put the word preppy in the listing title as well. This one sold for $33. I think there were a few spots on this, if I'm not mistaken. Again, I just took pictures of it. I disclosed it in the description. And this was something that I got for free from my mother-in-law. So again, no brainer when it comes to listing it, even if it has flaws, because it's a great brand. And I made a net profit of $26.40 on that. The next platform where I had some sales was eBay. I sold this new with tags pair of 90 degree by Reflex cropped black leggings in a size extra small. I've had these forever, um, probably more than two years. I got it for free from a friend of mine who used to go to my church, and so it sold for $12. I made a net profit of $10.40. This is not a bolo brand. You do not need to pick this up, but I got it for free. So I was like, sure, let's just go ahead and list it. On Mercari, which was the next platform where I had a sale, I sold this dress by the brand Herocole. I've never heard of this. And to be honest, the label was not super impressive to me, which we know that doesn't mean anything, but I don't know. I saw this and I was like, okay. I think this dress maybe has a little bit of a following for kind of their like retro style dresses, kind of like the pinup style, more like 50s and 60s style dresses. So for this dress in the listing title, I wrote black retro rockabilly a-line dress with a sweetheart neckline um, and it was in a size 14. This did actually sell pretty quickly. It sold for $22 on Mercari. Um, I had $2 into it from the reseller who hated selling clothes and so I made a net profit of $16.45. So while I wasn't super impressed by like the construction of this dress, I wasn't impressed by the label, I think it does have a little bit of a following. So if you see this brand, again it's Hero Cole. Don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, if you're finding it for dirt cheap, look up comps, see if it's worth the pickup, but I, you know, it might be. And then the last platform where I had a sale on this day was over on my own website, which is run through Shopify. But my website is shopbeckypark.com. It's where I put kind of the things that I feel like 
best represent my aesthetic, my vibe. Because as you can see, I will sell anything if, it, if it'll make me some money. But on this site, I only put the things that I actually kind of love and would maybe wear myself or I just think are really fun or beautiful. Um, and so this definitely fell on the fun category. It was a Beatles graphic t-shirt. So the brand is the Beatles, I guess. And it was um, like a Let It Be t-shirt. It said Let It Be on the front. I feel like I, I'm trying to remember right now. I don't have the visual in front of me, but I think that it had like a picture or like a grid of the band members. Um, but it was in a women's size extra large. I priced this on my website at $15.95, but that's also with free shipping. So that's another unique thing about my website is that I offer free shipping on everything and I offer everything at my absolute lowest. You know, it's the lowest I'm willing to go, but I start at those low prices on that site and I offer free shipping. So if you're curious, you know, definitely check it out. It's where I put my favorite stuff for my best prices. And so once you factor in the fact that I paid $2 for this, it came from the reseller who hated reselling and my shipping costs and the tiny fees that comes from selling on Shopify. My net profit on that was $8.99. On Saturday, which was May 6th, on Poshmark, I sold this universal standard for J. Crew. So they did some sort of collaboration, which I didn't know J. Crew did. Universal Standard is one of my favorite brands to resell. The brand is known for kind of like a minimalist vibe, just, you know, if you're trying to create your um, capsule wardrobe or something, you could definitely look at this brand for just great classic pieces that will never go out of style and they're just well made. But they must have collaborated with J. Crew, and this was the green twill sheath dress in a size extra large. I found this at a local Goodwill, so I paid $6.99 for it. It sold for $48 with discounted ship and I made a net profit of $28.43. That sale was was a result of Pasha VA sending out offers to likers on my behalf and that's how I made the sale. On eBay, I sold this pair of Nike dry fit yellow line swim trunks in a size medium. Um, they did have pockets. They had a six inch inseam and these I got for $3 from a thread of rescue box, a men's rescue box from kind of a while ago. These sold for $11. I made a net profit of $5.56. So not a lot, but especially on eBay, I've been accepting most offers in the hopes that that would cause more offers to come in, which works sometimes, not all the time. The final day of sales that we'll talk about is Sunday, which was May 7th. On Poshmark, I sold this pair of Earth Spirit Brown Benny, I believe that was a style name, vegan leather slip-on comfort shoes in a size seven. Um, Earth Spirit is a shoe brand that I've heard some resellers talk about. They say that they sell it for a good amount and that it sells really quickly for them. This has not been my experience with this brand. I actually did pick these up at a local thrift store for $3.39 because I wanted to try it out for myself. I won't be picking it up. That's just me though. Um, these sold for $12. I made a net profit of $5.66. But I do believe I made this sale using Closet Clear Out, if I'm not mistaken. I think I reached out to the buyer who would like the item, let them know that I could drop the price to $12 and they'd get discounted shipping as a result. Um, and I asked them if they'd be interested in that they said yes which is how I made the sale and if you want to learn more about my closet clear out method I do have a video here that I made on it a while ago but it has some great information about what I think is a very smart way to use closet clear out um, the next sale was this black wrap dress it had no brand name to it no label no tags whatsoever um, but it had flutter sleeves um, a peplum hem and it was in a size small i figured out that it was in a size small just by using measurements and i usually look at like the loft site for their sizing guide if something doesn't have a brand name and all i have is measurements to go off of i feel like loft is pretty standard um and so i don't know why i usually just go to the loft site for their size guide but um, this sold for $10. I got it in a micro bale of dresses from America's Thrift Supply. They had reached out a while ago asking if I could do an unboxing on my channel, and I do have that video here. Um, it was not an impressive unboxing. There were not very many pieces in that box that I was excited about. I was not excited about this, but I was like, I'm just going to try to make some money off of the pieces that, you know, came to me in this micro bale. So I made a net profit of $7.05. 
The next thing to sell was by the brand Cabin Creek. It was this floral brocade boho cottagecore button-up vest in a size extra large. Now, Cabin Creek is the type of brand that you find pretty often at Goodwill. I don't think it retails for a ton. It certainly does not resell for a ton, but I thought it just kind of had a cute look to it. Some of these pieces, even though the brand isn't spectacular, they'll still make really fun pieces, especially for that cottagecore vibe or, you know, just for like a more retro look. Um, so I did model this because it was something that I offered on my website for my January drop way back when, um, but it finally sold on Poshmark for $15. I had $2 into it from the reseller who hated reselling, so I made a net profit of $10 on that. The next thing to sell on Poshmark was by the brand Ted Baker, and the style name, I believe, is Oella. It was this pink sheer scalloped collar button-up shirt in a size 6. I got this at a garage sale. It was like the greatest garage sale I've ever gone to, mainly because um, the people putting on the garage sale, it was like a mother-daughter team. The mother used to have a flea market space, so she had like a little booth, um, but she was liquidating the stuff that she had purchased for that. And then the daughter sold on, I believe, eBay. And she had a really good eye. She sold a lot of vintage stuff, you know, like mother, like daughter, but also she had, you know, anthropology brands. She had this, um, Ted Baker piece. Um, her stuff was priced a little higher than what you'd find at most garage sales, but that's because she was liquidating stuff that she had purchased to sell online and she probably paid up for some of these pieces. So my average cost of goods for that garage sale was $4.29. I sold this for $30, so I made a net profit of $19.71. On eBay, I sold this Ralph Lauren Sport dark navy short sleeve polo dress in a size small. It was made of 100% cotton and this got a ton of attention everywhere. I had it listed for $35 and it actually sold once before on eBay, but when the person got it, they were like, you said this was black, but it's actually really dark blue. And I think they were right. So they returned it. I changed the listing to reflect the fact that it was not black, but it was in fact dark blue. Um, and then I made the sale again, but this time for $17.49 because I had a sale running on eBay. And the reason why that makes me sad is because I believe I got offers on platforms like Depop, maybe even Poshmark for definitely more than $17.49, but I didn't take them because because I was waiting for like a $30 offer to come in, but I was running a pretty big sale on eBay and this happened to sell. As a result of that sale, that happens sometimes. It was also promoted at 3%. Um, I had $2 into it from the reseller who didn't like to resell clothes, so I made a net profit of $11.65. You know, if it had sold for my $30 price that I was looking to get, I, it's not like I would have made a ton more, but it's just that feeling of, oh, I should have just said yes earlier, and I could have made more, and I could have flipped it faster. But that's the way it goes sometimes. And then finally, I had a sale on Kittizen of all platforms. Um, I sold this pair of DL1961 mid-rise skinny jeans in a size 30. They were the angel style, and they sold for my full asking price on Kittizen of $54.95. Now, I do also offer free shipping on Kittizen, so that $54.95 included the cost of shipping that I had built into the price, but holy cow, I'm just shocked that those went for as much as they did on that platform. So I made a net profit of $33.50. DL 1961, however, is a brand that I no longer pick up because it sits forever. It does retail for a good amount, but it just sits and sits and sits. I just don't think it does that well in the resale market. So for that reason, it's not a brand that I'm actively picking up anymore. However, that was a good sale. I'm not going to lie. It was like one of my best sales of the week. So for the week on Poshmark, I sold 18 items for a gross sales amount of $407, which was amazing compared to how I've been doing on Poshmark in weeks prior. So once you factor in Poshmark's fees and the many discounts on shipping that I offer, due to, you know, Poshra VA, that total drops to $305.59. I had $54.51 into those 18 items as my cost of goods. And so my net profit, once you factor in all of those factors, drops to $251.08 on Poshmark, which is great because, again, there were weeks in April and in March where I wasn't even making $251 of profit for the week. So the fact that I did that just on Poshmark alone was wonderful. 
I had a pretty good week on eBay as well. I sold 11 items for a gross sales amount of $203.18. Once you factor in eBay's fees, that total drops to $165.86. My cost of goods for those 11 items was $23.07. And so my net profit for the week on eBay was $142.79. I had two Mercari sales for a gross sales amount of $36. Once you factor in Mercari's fees, that total drops to $29.87. I only had $3.02 as my cost of goods, and so my net profit was $26.85 on Mercari. I had one Shopify sale for a gross sales amount of $15.95. Once you factor in the fact that I paid for shipping and Shopify's fees, that total drops to $10.99. I had $2 as my cost of goods, and so my net profit on Shopify was $8.99. I had one Facebook Marketplace sale for $20. Once you factor in Facebook Marketplace's fees, that total drops to $18.58. This is why I wish I would make more Facebook Marketplace sales because their fees are so small compared to other platforms, but I don't know. I don't sell anything over there. Um, I only had $2 into that item, and so my net profit on Facebook Marketplace was $16.58. I had one kit is in sale for $54.95, but once you factor in my shipping and cost of goods, that total drops to $39.50. I had $6 into those jeans, and so I made a net profit of $33.50. So in total, I sold 34 items for a gross sales amount of $737 dollars and eight cents. Once you factor in shipping and my fees, that total drops to $570.39. My cost of goods for those 34 items was $90.60. And so my net profit for the week was $479.79, which felt really good because I feel like my net profit for the past few weeks has been like 200 something, 300 something. You know, there were weeks in like 2001, 2002, I feel like where I was making like $800 of net profit a week. And it's just been a really long time since I've seen numbers like that. It is what it is. I'm just happy to move out the pieces that I have been moving out. It's been really nice getting rid of really stale listings and even having some things just flip really quickly. Um, I'm pretty happy with the sales that I had for the week. So let me know down in the comments how sales have been for you. I feel like why while a lot of people have been complaining about slower sales in June, things have been looking up for me just a little bit, but I think that's because I've been more active. I've been listing more. Um, yeah, I've just been doing more when it comes to reselling, which will help my numbers go up. But that's gonna come to a screeching halt here when I go to Korea for a couple weeks. That's okay. I'm thankful for the flexibility to, you know, just be able to go on a trip here and there and leave my reselling business completely alone. If I were a good little reseller, I would schedule out listings to go live while I'm gone. Maybe I'll do it, but I probably won't. I just, I don't know. I'd just rather do other things. So we'll see what happens. But that is today's video. If you are like, man, I just want to watch more What's Old videos. I do have a playlist right here of every single What's Old video I have ever made since the beginning of this YouTube channel. So you can binge watch that playlist if you want. But for now, I shall bid you adieu. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the week and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.